right, take your Bible now and turn to Acts chapter number four. The book of Acts chapter number four. Quickly this evening, very, 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 very brief here this evening. We've got a lot to do tonight um, uh, and get this done. Appreciate everybody watching from home, online, other countries. There's people watching in Africa and, and the UK and Canada and everywhere right now, right now. So if you're running from the cops, don't turn around and let that camera see you. The live will come in here and get you tonight. We need you over this week. Uh, Acts chapter number four. Uh, oh, you ref- hang with us for a few days before you have to go off to the big house. All right. Acts chapter four. Acts chapter number four. And look here at verse number 31. Acts chapter four, verse 31. This is what we want to see. And when they had prayed. See that? Not organized, not advertised. Not prepared, not worked, not invited. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken. Where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. That's what we need. See, don't, don't feel like you have to tell everything you know to your friends. Just because you feel like you need to tell them and hurt somebody else's testimony. They were all in one heart and one mind, one soul. Neither said them all of his things of his own was possessed with his own. They had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. I want to preach just for a minute tonight on the subject, what happens when the church prays. Bible said that they prayed and the place was shaken. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming, taking that literal, that the actual building structure that they were in literally shook like a small earthquake. I take it that way. Some would take it other that that means the Lord just shook everybody. Maybe, maybe. But I, I, I'm, a very, I'm a very, very Bible literalist. I believe you take every verse in the Bible literal. Just as it says in the context, unless it is obvious that it's speaking symbolic. And so, and sometimes it is obvious. But here in this scripture, it says, when they had prayed, the place was shaken. I mean, them people got down and they said, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. And it got a hold of the Lord and he went, Rum, shook that place. Boy, that would be my desire uh, for, for people at the youth rally, for God to shake that place. I don't know if that literal building might shake. Be all right. It probably fall if it did. Uh, it's got a big crack back there in that one corner. But um, spiritually, we'd like to see the place shaken. We'd like to see the place shaken. Like I was preaching about this morning. Now, yeah, and we are, you say, we believe that? Yes, sir, we believe that. I believe that it's in the Bible, and I believe it's true. Uh, I was funny, funny yesterday. I was out uh, fixing a sign over there at Walmart. And I had to pull over here in the car, and I, I was fixing this sign like that where it sort of got twisted around by the wind or something. There's a bunch of old boys come up, a bunch of redneck guys. They was going fishing, and they had this big old, like a, a, like a 30-year-old uh, uh, Chevrolet blazer, the big old kind. And they all had the windows down, and they all, the old boys, you had on, no, they had to sleep. You know, you had your sleeves cut out right here. And there's a bunch of them sitting in there. And uh, I said, sorry about that. Be out of your way here in just a second. They said, that's all right. And I grabbed a track, and I said, here you go, y'all, y'all. And they said, yeah, yeah. He said, you Baptist? And at first I thought, maybe if I say it, they're going to cuss it out or something like that. And I said, well, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian first. And they said, are you a Baptist? And I said, yes, I am. Huh? And they said, all right, good. We'll take it. Ready. You ain't no Jehovah Witness or nothing, are you? And I said, and, I said yeah. and them old redneck boys, they know the difference between uh, the real thing and, and a fake thing. They did. And uh, they'd been raised out here, and they probably had a mama or grandma <laughs> preach to them, something like that. And and they knew what they They said, he's all right, he's back. By the way, that's why we still call our church a Baptist church. People ought to know what you are. Be, do, be something and let everybody know what you are. I know there's a lot of crazy, backslid, ignorant Baptists, and they do give all Baptists a bad name. But I was a Baptist before most of them guys got saved, and I'm not going to let them change me uh, by the grace of God. Amen. I'm a Baptist because of our Baptist forefathers and our history and the Baptist. Doc, you, and you got you to be something. You got to let people know what you are. 
And some, some don't like it, but some will. I mean, you know, I mean, you don't go to the store and see just a, bu a bunch of cans down through the air. Just, what if you just see silver cans lined up? Well, I'm going shopping today. I'm going to get this can. And it don't have no name on it? Is it dog food, pinto beans, or, or, or what? You don't know what it is. And so uh, you, you put on it, pinto beans. Well, if we put pinto beans, the lima beans won't come. Well, heck with the lima beans. Be whatever you are and be it. If they don't want to come, that's all right. Amen. That's good preaching, Brother Danny. And, and listen, I'm going to tell you something tonight. I, I let them know, yes, we are. We are Bible-believing, Bible-preaching, Christians first, Baptist second, Southern by the grace of God. That's right. That's what I tell people. And so tonight, uh, let, quickly, what happens when the church prays? Three things. This thing going to take just a couple minutes, ten minutes. So, The presence of God is perceived. The presence of God is perceived. Now, here's what will happen. Here's what will happen this week. Some of you will get the idea because the Lord moved in here this morning. If you did not see the service this morning, you missed a very, very unusual service. I mean, a fire of God fell right in the middle of it this morning. Go back and watch it. Uh, oh, I, and it was unusual, unusual. Uh, Brother Bonaventure took a running fit, and I don't know how many people wound up. It, you missed it if you were not in here this morning. And uh, uh, sometimes we get like that. We say, "Woo! well, we got the victory. The Lord's going to bless. My goodness, hallelujah. Uh, we're, we're gonna, but you know something? Right now, while I'm standing here and you're sitting there, the devil is plotting. Right now. He's out there tonight. He's like a snake, buddy. About the time you think he ain't gone. Uh, me, and, me and Frankie were mowing grass the other day. Where's he at? Oh, he moves every time. Stand up, booba. Uh, so me and him was mowing grass the other day. And uh, I put, he likes to sit on my, uh, my, my knees right here and help me mow my big mower. And we was mowing the grass. And uh, he begs to drive. Daddy, can I drive? And I get a big, and he goes, Ooh, that zero turn one just goes around and around and around. He can drive it. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, we're, me and him was mowing grass, coming around the front yard. And I was just uh, singing, glory to God, it's good to be saved. Isn't it great to be saved? Right in front of my house. And he jumped off, went out, and all of a sudden, poof, there's a snake got long. And that thing run right up in the middle of the And I oh, I can't really tell you. You know how you do when you see a snake? And I thought, Lord, have mercy. And, and, the, and the Lord said, just because you think the devil defeated, don't underestimate him. He's right now. He's hiding. He's hiding over there somewhere. He's hiding under your bed. <laughs> he's hiding in the closet. Not maybe, maybe literally. Uh, he's hiding. And then, then we came around the back, back of the house. Where, uh, back where the swimming pool is, and there was a nothing. Big long, and that thing was that long. There's black snakes, and so, you know, I won't kill you. I told Frankie, I said, I'm about to make you really sick. Uh, and so, uh, that, and it's like the Lord says, right now, when you think everything's going good, you think everything's fine, you think everything's great, right now, that old serpent, that old wicked Satan is out there plotting some. The devil's got a plan for everybody's life in here. All you teenagers in here, you know the devil has a plan for your life. He'll, he'll turn you into a, a, a drug addict and, and a suicide and ruin your life. But God has a plan for your life. And he'll turn you into a happily married person one day with a good life and a good church. It just depends on you. The devil's voting against you. God's voting for you. you got the deciding vote which way your life's going to go. And that's very important. And so uh, uh, the, the presence of God is perceived. You know, uh, I, uh, I heard old C.T. tell him about this old preacher. He knew up in West Virginia. And it's, it's not an isolated story. A lot of them old preachers in West Virginia had no education. None. My daddy did. My daddy grew up in West Virginia. Didn't have, he didn't have a mama. His mama died when he was a baby and or a little four or five years old. And um, daddy's, my daddy's daddy, Papa Castle, was who knows where, bootlegging and, and uh, running all over them mountains up there. Well, that left, I think, 11 kids in a little old house with nobody to raise them. And some of them was grown, and they raised the, the younger ones. And that, that my daddy come out. Daddy had it rough. Daddy had it rough. They were raised like animals. And, and they're, they're a lot like animals. They're real, like a dog. Real tough to eat anything, sleep out in the snow and everything else. And uh, uh, I, my daddy told mom, he, he said he had stood outside people's house, just like a dog comes to your house, hoping you'll throw something out. He said, I've stood outside of people's house before wishing they'd asked me to come in and eat. 
And he said, uh, uh, so it was rough, rough. And some of them old mountain preachers did not get to go to school. And they, uh, they, and they got saved, and they, the Lord called them to preach, and they couldn't read. And they couldn't read. And he, CT is telling about this old mountain preacher. He said he'd heard all these guys educated and done been to the cemetery and got them a degree and done got their education, done got a, uh, uh, they're, uh, they're, uh, you know, they're, uh, they're like uh, 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 um, applesauce and MA degree, more applesauce, and PhD piled higher and deeper, and, and that's what I thought it was. And he said that guy, he, he uh, PhD actually stands for postcode diggers, you know that. That's what Mays Jackson said. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, he, done, he said, I've heard all these preachers are educated. He said, I've heard these guys get up, and they had everything right. They spoke properly. They would sit over here like this, like a minister is supposed to sit. You're not supposed to let your socks show. You're supposed to sit like this. Uh, you ain't supposed to sit like this, you know, and pray and read your Bible and, and, and stuff like that. And, and they'd walk to the pulpit like this. They would never raise their voice. They would never move. And he said it was better than last year's bird nest. He said it was unbelievable. He said there's an old preacher up in West Virginia. Listen to this. He said that old preacher up in West Virginia, he had no education. He couldn't, he couldn't read and write. And he said his wife would come to the pulpit and read his scripture like I read here. And he said he'd be over here like this waiting on his wife to get through reading. And he's like, he's like, like this, just chomping at the bed. He's like, let, let me get out. Let me get in that pool. Let me get in. And he, he said she'd read that scripture and he, she'd get out of the way and he'd run over there and just go, boom, <laughs> and just explode for about 30 minutes. And he said the power of God would be all over that place. Now that's what I'm talking about tonight. I'm talking about the presence of God is perceived. Our generation of preachers think, boy, if I can go to this college or I can go to this degree and get there, there. Now look, I'm not knocking education, but if you think that's a substitute for the power of God, you're way off base, buddy. I'm going to tell you what. i tell you what we need to do. Church needs to pray. Church needs to pray. We need to get out in the bushes somewhere, out in the woods somewhere this week, Get up early before the kids get up. Stay up after they go to bed and get down and say, God, shake that place. God, shake that place. You know, like Paul and Silas did in that jail in Acts chapter 16. They were in jail and they were there down in there praying and they were praying and the Bible said God shook that jail. What about that? And the doors flung open. And they, rock, they said, uh, they said uh, Paul and Silas sung the jailhouse rock before Elvis ever got off his baby formula. Buddy, I'm telling you something here. I mean, they sung and God shook that place. God shook that place. Ladies and gentlemen, he shook it. That's what we need. We need to be in unity. We need to be in one accord. If, and, and let me tell you something about the power of God. If you've ever been around it, if you've ever been one time or two times or a revival, if you've ever, y'all listen to me tonight, if you've ever been around the real thing, the old time power, when God the Holy Ghost, not a bunch of, not a bunch of hyped up mess, not just somebody trying to get people to do something, not just personalities of a preacher, not just uh, talent of a singing group. If you've ever been around the old time power, when God the Holy Ghost grabbed the whole of the church, there is nothing in this world that will ever satisfy you like that. There's nothing like it. There ain't nothing like it. There ain't nothing like old time power of God moving to the church. There ain't nothing like it. And I said this morning, church is the best thing in the world when it's real. It's the most boring thing in the world when it ain't, too. Uh, it's the best, best thing in the world when it is. People know it. People know it. I'll tell you something else. They never forget it. Once in a while, I'll get a phone call. It'll be from some te who was a teenager back in the 80s and 90s, and they're in the 40s now. And and they'll say, Brother Danny, you remember me? I said, yeah, I think I do. And they say this. I got a letter at home right now. I'll let Kelly, I wish all y'all could read it. I got in the mail yesterday. You wouldn't believe it. And uh, this teenager would say, Brother Danny, I'll never forget when we went to camp. And I'll never forget what happened out there and what God done for me. All these years later, I've strayed. I've got off track. I've gotten a mess. But I've never, ever forgot what God did for me that night. That's what we need. Not an emotional stir, the power of God. The power of God is received. The purpose of God is achieved. Amen? Amen. You know what we needed here tonight? We need some young people and mamas and daddies that are willing to lead a clean life. A clean life. 
Now, what do I mean by a clean life? That means we, we get our heart clean. It would bother us any kind of off color, any kind of, 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 of sexual innuendo jokes or little stuff that people talk about all the time. If, if people joke about that, uh, it's because deep, deep down inside they want to take another step forward. But I will tell you tonight, we need some people with a clean heart. Clean heart. You say, Brother Danny, it's impossible to keep a clean heart in our generation. Well, it, it's not impossible, but it ain't impossible. It's close, but it ain't impossible. You can walk right. You can live right. You can act right. You can spit white. That's right, brother. You can live a clean life if you'll, if you'll really dedicate your life to the Lord here tonight. People know it. There's great power. There's conviction. I talked about this this morning when I got saved. You know what got a hold of me? Conviction. I got saved before the preacher ever even preached. Now, I had heard preaching. I'd heard the Word of God. So it was in me, or I'd heard it. But I got saved before there was any preaching. And the singing, I don't even remember a word they sung. But the Spirit of God got a hold of me. Will you help me do that this week? I'm going to hush in just a minute. Will you help me this week say, Lord, when we pray, may the place be shaken. The power of God is received. The presence of God is perceived. And the purpose of God is achieved. I used to know an old boy up in Marion years ago. And uh, he's, his name's Kenneth Angel. Oh, Kenneth's probably dead and gone now. I, I don't know if anybody in here would remember him. Probably not. Maybe, Carrie, maybe. I doubt it. We used, we used to go street preaching. Well, she was just like five years old and, uh, or six years old. We used to go street preaching every Saturday. Before I ever started the bus ministry and stuff, we were street preaching every Saturday. I mean, like clockwork. We'd go to Iceville. We'd go to the flea market in Marion. And old Kenneth, he'd come down from Burnsville. And he'd come down as uh, just, and he's just an old country boy, probably never even went to the ninth grade. And uh, he, couldn't, he couldn't talk plain. He, I'm, not, I'm not making fun of him. He, he couldn't talk plain. Uh, honestly, when he preached, you couldn't hardly understand what he said. He, he'd preach like this. He'd go, hey, 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 hey. That's what it sounded like. Sound like Hitler. Uh, you know, give him one of them speeches. You know, you ever heard like that. But I mean, but I'm telling you what, buddy, when that old guy started preaching, you, it's like you get scared. What was that? It's like, oh my goodness. It's, it's like the power. It, it, I can't even understand what he's saying. I've seen churches, services, lots of times where the power of God would move in. Somebody be up over here just a preaching up a storm. Somebody be over here walking down the aisle preaching. Somebody in the preacher be up here. He couldn't even keep his stuff together. That two or three preaching going on at the same time. You say, wasn't that confusion? No. It was just all right. They was enjoying it over there. We enjoyed it over here. I was enjoying all of it. Lord, there's times when, like Hallelujah Howard, he preached harder than the preacher. I didn't know who to give a love offering to when it was over. <laughs> Who preached tonight? Uh, but let me tell you something, people. That's all we need. Old time power. And let me say one thing to ladies, and I'm done. Lady, I hear it once in a while. Uh, some of you, Brother Danny, Brother Danny, I just remember back in the old days when and the old, them old ladies shouted and they praised God and they jumped up and they throw their hands, you know, and everything. What's happened, Brother Danny? What's happened? I'll tell you what's happened. They're all dead. And now you are the old ladies. You tell me what's happened. Something has. All them old women's gone. Brother, I've seen her. Remember Miss Opal up there? Son, she'd jump up and start slinging them hands like that. And it's like, whoa, boy. People start hitting all they're getting right with God. Miss Barker, some of them. Uh, the, remember Miss, Miss uh, Henderson, is it Henderson or Henson uh, that just went home to be the Lord? The lady down there in Alabama, her and her daughter sang. Is it Henson or Hen Henson? Uh, look them up on the online, the Henson. And the preacher called on the scene. No big speakers, no drums, no, no amplifiers, no guitars, nothing. Walk up there in an old print dress, looks like your grandma wore. And they'd stand right here, and her daughter's right here. And she'd say, there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. And someone would go, Moving that church. People start saying, no, 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 no music. Boy, if we could get that famous court. No, uh-uh, uh-uh. Hey, we're going to have some hillbillies Friday night I want y'all to meet. 
real. It ain't a skit. It's for real. <laughs> and and, and uh, you, you'll like them. Old time. You say, why would you have some old hillbilly redneck for a youth rally? Because the youth need to hear that. He'd reach back under the last generation and, and find out what have made them old people shout. So all you younger ladies in here tonight, 50 and younger, <laughs> all you old 40-year-old women, it's your turn to shout. Amen. Now grandma's backslid. They, she can't shout her bobby pins down. She ain't got no... I heard put bobby pins in. She, she can't, uh, her, her, she don't have to worry about her makeup. She now none on. I mean, she, she can't, she can't, uh, 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 listen, brother, grandma's at home watching Netflix backslid on the couch and, and we're wondering where the power of God went. I tell you, that, that them old people had something because they spent time with the Lord. Right? That's right. I've seen it over and over and over and over and over. I used to preach up in them little country churches. Uh, come on, Kiana. I used to preach up in them little country churches. And I, you've heard me tell it. I learned a lot as a young preacher traveling in the mountains. Burnsville, Bakersville, Asheville, North Wilkesboro, Boone, on up into Virginia. I learned a lot. And I'd go in there in the first night, and I'd sit down. I was about 20, 20, 20 years old, 21, 22 years old. And I'd sit there like this. And they'd say, now we have this young man from Marion is going to come and preach for us. The choir would come out and sing. This is way long time ago. And them old ladies would come out there. There'd be about, be about six old farmers up here on the top row of the choir. And, had farm, and they'd literally, literally wore overalls and white shirts. But I mean, they're clean. You'd see yourself in them brogans and them shoes they wore. They are shiny, and they had them white shirts pressed and over. That was their Sunday go to me. That was the best clothes they had. Way up yonder in the mountains, a pigeon roost, upper roost, lower roost. I preached up in there. Uh, it's real places. Those are real places. And you can go up there. It's right above Spruce Pine. And, uh, and uh, they'd get your songbook and they'd sing, I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. Choir leader so backward that he wouldn't even look the congregation in the face. That's how shot backward. That's what mommy called it. Then a little light from heaven fill my soul. It bathed my heart. That's exactly the way he did. He's leading this scene right here tonight. And wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. I kept, and I thought, oh, that's good. That's good. You know, whatever. And all of a sudden, the door flung open over here. And there's an old sister come out of there. Had her hair put back in a little bun. I mean, old Church of God hair does look like a a hornet's nest on the back of her head. And and they she'd come out like that and have her Bible under her arm like that. <laughs> her dress about down to here. And she'd come out of that room like that and just going, Woo! And there's about six or seven look just like her right behind her. I ain't kidding. I've seen them ladies. They'd go up there and march up there in the front row of that choir. And he'd say, next verse, I may have doubts and fear. My eyes be... And something changed in that room. The atmosphere changed. And I sat in there 21, 22 years old and I thought, I'm, I'm getting this. I remember thinking, I'm learning something here. It's not by might. It's not by our power. It's by his spirit. So it's not a talent. We think, boy, if we could get so-and-so, Brother Danny. Uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm not against getting so-and-so. But I'm telling you the power of God. What gets the job done? When they had prayed, the place was shaken. Let's pray. Let's all stand. She's playing softly. Let's all stand tonight. I don't know about you. I hope that you'll spend a lot of time in prayer this week. Get up in the woods. Get up before the kids get up. Stay up after they're gone to bed. Something. Something. Let God speak to your heart here tonight. If you want to come, come on, pray. This is the way we'll go tonight. Anybody else? Amen. Amen. Let's get an altar and pray tonight. Amen. Oh, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, come down. Holy Ghost, come down. Lord, help us to pray. Put a burden on our heart to pray this week, Lord. I pray your spirit would come in Holy Ghost power and do the work that only you can do. God, we need you. 
Lord, if we've ever needed you before, we sure do need you now. Now, Lord, do what needs to be done in every life. God, we'll thank you for it. We love you. Oh, God, do a miracle, Lord. Do a miracle. Do a miracle, Lord, we pray. We'll thank you for what you do. We love you now. Help us get this work done tonight and tomorrow. Lord, let everything work right. Lord, let all the sound equipment and everything work good. Lord, let the weather be good. If it could be your will, Lord, please let the weather be okay. Lord, bless everybody traveling and give them a safe trip. And watch over and bless the preaching and the singing. All that's said or done for the glory of God. Now, Lord, I pray that you bless everybody this week. Give everybody the rest they need. And God, bless the giant spring youth rally once again. As thou hast done the days of old. We'll give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. 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 All righty. All right. That is the that was the Henderson. I got a note here. The Henderson sisters. Watch them. Watch them. Uh, uh, now, we fellas, don't everybody run off till we know we got everything. Um, Andy and them will help you do the sound. Uh, and with all this equipment and stuff up here here tonight, we are going to have to take our tables. I just found out. We said we didn't need them, but there's a little school group going to be over there Thursday for a little while needing their tables. And uh, uh, we'll do that tonight and uh, load up everything that we can. Okay? Uh, don't don't leave. If, if there's somebody here, I, I asked Lorreen, I asked I, I, Wes, uh, I'll give somebody the key, some keys in a little plastic bag the other day, and I have no idea even who it was when he's down here working or something. If you got them, I sure need them. Um, She told me Thursday. Is it? Oh, that lady told me, that's fine. I don't care. They said they'd be out by 3 o'clock.